Now, in this week's edition of Let's Talk Some Star Wars, we'll be taking a look at the results of the poll that asked the question, who is the greatest Jedi of the prequel era? And the exact meaning of greatest here was very much up for the individual voter to decide. Anyway, I'll also be reading and responding to some of your comments, as well as showing off the artwork that was sent in to me this week. And wasting no time here, let's get right to the results, where we'll see that the winner with 42% of the vote was Obi-Wan Kenobi. In second place, getting 21%, or half of what Kenobi got, was Yoda. In third place, with 18%, was Qui-Gon Jinn. In fourth, it was Anakin Skywalker getting 12% of the vote. And in last place, with only 7%, it was Mace Windu. And though I wasn't surprised to see Obi-Wan win this thing, he would have been my prediction going in, I was a little surprised to see it was by such a large margin. Again, he got twice the votes of Yoda in second place, and got over two-fifths of all votes. I thought this might actually be a pretty close race all around, with every one of these five choices getting a nice chunk of the votes for a variety of reasons. And there's also the fact that one of these choices, that being Qui-Gon Jinn, who took third and got 18% of the vote, actually got a tremendous amount of support in the comments, more so than any of the other options by a pretty good portion. In fact, a lot of the more top-rated comments, including the top-rated one, were in support of Qui-Gon Jinn being the greatest Jedi of the prequel era. And I'll kick this off by reading some of them, starting with the aforementioned top-rated comment, which this week comes to us from Chris Sullivan, who said, Qui-Gon, you know if he was around, Anakin wouldn't have fallen. Then there was this comment from Stephen Richards, who said, Qui-Gon, I mean... He learned how to become a Force ghost before Yoda, and he followed the will of the Force, not the Republic. Then we had this comment from Nicholas, who simply said, All guilty of ignorance except Qui-Gon. Then we had this one from Kenny613, who said, Right away I thought Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, but when I let myself get level-headed, I realized it was Qui-Gon Jinn. He never cared about what the Council thought. He did what he knew needed to be done. He also would have kept Anakin on a straight path. Next, we have what Dion Dorsey said. For me, it would have to be Qui-Gon Jinn. He wasn't worried about the Senate or democracy, just the living force. Qui-Gon, like his master, felt like the Jedi were straying away from what made a Jedi a Jedi. Then there's what Dan said. Qui-Gon wasn't blind to the possibility of the Sith still being around. He wasn't so uptight with the Jedi Code, which was ultimately their downfall. He was the only Jedi of that era that truly understood what it meant to be a Jedi. He was the first to become a Force ghost for a reason. And last but not least here, we have what Nessa said. I feel like it's Qui-Gon. As much as I absolutely love Obi-Wan in the prequels, and Yoda is one of my faves in the original trilogy, and Mace Windu was amazing thanks to Samuel L. Jackson, I just have to stick with Qui-Gon. His intentions were pure when he wanted to train Anakin, knowing he was special and needed some guidance. He also was the most balanced of all the Jedi. All the others fell in absolutes, which is a dark side practice. He stayed true to himself and was instilling that in young Anakin before he died. I can't help wondering what would have happened if he had lived, if Anakin would have fallen to the dark side at all. Okay, so that was just a small sampling of the comments in support of Qui-Gon Jinn, and there were pretty much two common themes throughout all of them. The first being, he was the only true Jedi of the time, the only one still listening to or following the will of the Force, instead of listening to the will of the Senate and being overly concerned about the Jedi Code or following the rules and regulations. Second, most seem to think that if he wasn't killed by Maul and had gone on to train Anakin, Anakin wouldn't have fallen to the dark side. And I do agree with that. I do think Qui-Gon was meant to find and train Anakin, and that Maul killing him was something the Force did not intend or foresee because I think the Force always has trouble foreseeing or predicting the actions of the overly selfish Sith that always, intentionally or not, work against the will of the Force and the balance. So if Qui-Gon lives and trains Anakin, I think a great many things change, among them being that Anakin likely never gets close to or becomes friends with Chancellor Palpatine. Also, I don't think either Anakin or Qui-Gon would have fought in the Clone Wars. I don't think they would have become generals of the Army of the Republic. I think they would have stayed as far away from the fighting and the war as possible. And then in the end, when Palpatine basically reveals himself and Order 66 happens and most of the Jedi are wiped out, that's when Anakin emerges and goes and deals with and destroys the Sith. He then reassembles what's left of the Jedi Order, and after nearly being wiped out, they would have, I would hope, learned their lesson about aligning themselves too closely with the Republic, and then Anakin leads the Jedi into a new, very bright future. 
I think that's what the Force truly intended or had in mind, and I've considered making a video on this topic and getting much more into it. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments below. For now though, let's talk about the Jedi that did train Anakin and the one who won this poll, which is of course Obi-Wan Kenobi. And we'll start doing that with this comment from Dusty Hope, who said, As much as I want to pick Qui-Gon, it's ultimately Obi-Wan for me. He's so charming and likable, essentially the stereotypical chivalrous and headstrong knight. We get to see his adventure from Qui-Gon's squire all the way up to having his own squire, Anakin, whose story is also incredibly compelling. He also fought each of the villains from the last poll except for Sidious, and bested all of them with the exception of Dooku. I consider Jango's retreat on Kamino a defeat. Obi-Wan is present for every major event in the saga, or strongly connected in some way, so he feels like an anchor point in the saga. He also has the best lines, so I'd argue he's the best written character on the list overall. Not to mention all of the great performances from Sir Alec Guinness, Ewan McGregor, and James Arnold Taylor. Then we also have this comment about Obi-Wan from Javier Ignacio Mermos, who said, Okay, first time I write here. I care about this in a special way. Heroes are role models of good morals. It always has been, at least in a transcendent way. Good resonates within. I voted Obi-Wan, and I have a case for this. He is a gentleman, a warrior, a priestly figure. A warrior saint. He's a balanced man, focused, cheerful. Clone Wars series makes the case for him and committed. He embodies the Jedi ideals as a force of good and justice. He is a cunning warrior and develops as a wise man throughout the prequels and original trilogy. Anakin states he is as wise as Yoda and powerful as Windu. Love Windu, he bested Sidious one-on-one. -on -one. How broken is that? I always hear that line and think Anakin is going somewhere. He admires Obi-Wan. And in the face of defeat, no snowflaking for Obi. He mans up, takes the beating, and faces his darkest dreams traitor Anakin and destroy Jedi Order, and he lives up to the challenge, doing what must be done. His old Ben arc is excellent. He retires and keeps hope, giving up his life for others. This is the ultimate chivalry tale, one that resonates with boys and men. Hands up for Obi-Wan. Then we also have this comment from a name I'm not going to try to pronounce and butcher, so forgive me for that. Anyway, they said, the amount of crap Obi-Wan Kenobi has to go through is so unbelievable that to this day I wonder how he did still remain on the light side. Okay, though I don't know if I'd personally give Kenobi the nod as the greatest Jedi in the prequels, I think when we consider everything he goes through in them, and what he ultimately becomes when we see him again in A New Hope, and what he no doubt goes through in the 19 years leading up to that, and that in that time he completes the training to become a Force Ghost, which means he's let go of all of his fear, anger, hatred, and attachments, he might just be the greatest Jedi we see overall, even greater than Yoda in many ways. And as much as I'm looking forward to his series on Disney Plus eventually, I'm a slight bit worried about what they're going to do with him, because I don't ever want to see Obi-Wan go full on Luke in The Last Jedi, where he completely gives up on the Jedi for any length of time. Now, he can certainly question them and their ways and have his doubts about what he's even doing, but I don't ever want to see him give up entirely or walk away. I think that'd be a huge disservice to the character. The idea that he did what he needed to do despite everything he'd gone through is what I and I think many people really love about Obi-Wan. Not to mention, I really see him as the glue of the first two trilogies. He's what holds it all together or brings the story together, and he's also the reason why Luke would one day be able to redeem Vader because of everything he did and gave up for Luke, and that he kept believing through it all. And I think one of the reasons why the Rey is a Kenobi theory was so popular after The Force Awakens is because many people just want it to be true because they wanted him to still be a big part of the saga, to be that key piece of the puzzle he's really always been. Alright, moving on now, the next comment comes to us from David MacDonald who said, Anakin is the chosen one, isn't he? And well, not in this poll he wasn't. Not only did he finish fourth with only 12% of the vote, but there were very few comments made about him one way or the other. And I think that has a lot to do with, of course, him falling to the dark side at the end of the trilogy, which isn't to say he wasn't a hell of a Jedi during his time in many respects, or that he didn't have tremendous potential. He just, by his own admission, wasn't the Jedi he was supposed to be. Next up here we have this comment from Speaker for the Dead who said, My vote for Yoda was because he is by far the most powerful of all the Jedi Masters. More important, 
is the sheer length of his service. How many Jedi owe their strength and skill to Yoda? I would say all the others on this list would not be who and what they are without Yoda. He faced the Emperor alone and I believe could have won, but I think his age was what betrayed him. I think his only weakness was his rigid adherent to the dogma of the Order, which I think is true for the entirety of the Jedi. So for me, it is simple, he is the oldest, wisest, most powerful, most skilled, best teacher, etc. If you think not, blinded by the dark side you are. That then brings us to this comment from Kalfas, who said, I don't get why Yoda, the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, the wisest Jedi, the Jedi who helped train generations upon generations of Jedi, who could hold his ground against Darth Sidious, is neglected by many. Yoda equals the prequel Jedi Order. Others are great Jedi in their own right, but Yoda is the only true choice. Then there's this comment from a trio Berlin who said, Yoda knows everything and died from old age. This means something. We also had this comment from Thomas H. who said, Yoda, it's always Yoda. And much like with Anakin, there weren't a ton of comments made about Yoda. However, in this case, I think it's because it's just kind of a given that he's a great Jedi. He's Yoda after all. I mean, he took second place and got 21% of the vote. And I believe most of the people who voted for him, if they had to argue or defend that choice, would just kind of say what these comments did. That he's Yoda. Do you really need more of an explanation than that? Anyway, let's now move on to this comment from Windex, who said, How is Mace Windu ranked last? The dude did all the dirty work in the Clone Wars and was literally the only Jedi to face Darth Sidious and actually beat him until Anakin betrayed him. Not even Yoda could defeat Sidious or Dooku for that matter. Then there was also this comment from Blubman, who said, Mace Windu is the strongest Jedi of all time and would have defeated the most powerful Sith Lord in single combat if Anakin didn't interfere. So in my opinion, he is the greatest Jedi. Then there was also this comment from Tom Griffiths who said, Really? Only 6%? Besides the character being played by Sam Mother F. and Jackson, Mace is the embodiment of the Jedi Order and the problem with the Order. Plus that Mace is hinted at in a great fan film. Mace's ability attitude was something that should have been explored more than just in the Clone Wars. The hubris that he thought he could just roll up with the Fisto and the other cannon fodder he brought with him when attempting to arrest Palpatine. And is he officially dead? This arrogance is something we saw in the other four on this list, which led them to death, the dark side, and retreat. How very Starscream. Not saying that the others aren't cool, but Mace had another quality perhaps more dark side than the Council would admit to. The arrogance was all the Jedi on this list's greatest weakness exploited expertly. Also, would have made an interesting strain in the sequels if there was a structured narrative instead of a rehashing of the original series. And, you know, I think the biggest problem with Windu and why he finished last in this poll is he just wasn't explored that much within the movies themselves. I mean, most of the comments about him centered around the fact that he defeated Palpatine in combat, which, don't get me wrong, is extremely impressive, I don't mean to take anything away from him, but is combat skill alone what makes you the greatest Jedi? I don't think the Jedi themselves would argue that. Not that I'm implying there wasn't more to Windu than his skill with a lightsaber or his prowess in combat, but again, in the movies at least, we don't see much more out of Windu than, well, kicking some ass. And if this poll question had been, who is the most powerful Jedi in the prequel era, I think Windu does much, much better in that case, if not just flat out wins the poll. In fact, I think only Anakin and Yoda would even be in the discussion with him, because in my opinion, neither Qui-Gon nor Obi-Wan were really powerful Jedi, at least not in the way I think most people would interpret powerful. Basically, Windu was the best at the thing all Jedi, in theory, always seek to avoid, which is combat. And finally here we have this comment from Michael B. who said, Yoda, wisest Jedi, Mace Windu, most powerful Jedi, Anakin Skywalker, chosen one, duh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jedi with most integrity, Qui-Gon Jinn, the truest Jedi. And I think Michael's really on the right track here. And if we had five different polls with one asking who is the wisest, another asking the most powerful or the most potential or who had the most integrity or which represented the true purpose of the Jedi the best, we'd get five different winners. And so what we can perhaps take away from this poll is that when it comes to the greatest, integrity seems to be what matters the most. Either that or people just really love the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi, 
And I don't think we can blame him for that. Not only does he become a force ghost, but again, in many ways, he is the glue that holds it all together. He is the backbone of the Skywalker saga. He is the greatest of the Jedi. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think of what I or anyone else had to say, and if you agree with the results. So leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.